I'm the librarian at the Bitsong National Museum of Natural History. It's based in Pretoria City Centre. Most of you have driven past it and don't really know what's inside. It's the strange building with all the skeletons hanging outside. Oh, I'm in the library. I have been here since 1999. I started as a student and went on to become the librarian. So it's 20 years of experience and learning that I've been doing in this library. Now, why a museum has a library is for two reasons. The first reason is to support the research museums do. Museums isn't just about exhibitions and collections, but it's based on research that we use to um, learn, learn about knowledge. Museums are custodians, and Natural History Museum are custodians of our national heritage. We're here to document, study, and understand our nature around us. And the library in itself, number one, supports the research and information needs of the curators and the researchers in the museum. We also then extend our services and our help to any researchers at any research institutions, university students, even the general public when they find something strange and they want to read up on it, they'll come to the library because they know, because we concentrate on that particular subject field which is natural sciences, zoology, archaeology, paleontology, will have a broad, broad collection that covers all those subjects. The other thing that uh, makes a museum library a little bit different to other libraries is we also preserve all the old, very important books. So within, it, within a library sits also a museum collection of very, very important books. So I have pulled out a few books just to show you and share with you. The first book that I pulled out is a very, it's one of the oldest books in our library's collection. It was published in 1558. It was written by a scientist called Gisneri and it was based on the birds and it's the knowledge of the birds they had at that time. Now I pulled up a picture of an eagle to show you and then to just touch on why some of the really, really old books have very draw pictures in some very, very strange ways. Now, most of these scientists were based in Europe and the travelers would find these animals, would shoot them, skin them and send the skins to these um, scientists living in Europe. Now, by the time the skins had reached Europe, all those other big museums in America, but mostly Europe, they had already been warped in that. So the scientists would stretch out those skins and then sort of try and make out what the animal would have looked like. And with this eagle in particular, you'll see that the artist was heavily influenced by the mythology and stories of those times because the eagle looks a bit like a griffin. No way does it really look like an eagle, um, but that's what they imagined the eagle would have looked like from that stretched skin. The book is written in Latin and ancient Greek. The early language that the scientists and zoologists preferred to use was Latin and Greek and it's become a very important part of the collection, but it's still heavily used in science today. Now, what makes natural sciences unique is natural sciences books never are never outdated. And I'll show you the reason why. I have pulled out these books as well. And this series of books was published in 1766, and it was written by a gentleman called Carolus Linnaeus. And what Linnaeus did is he established the method of naming species. So every animal species in the country has its scientific name. Human beings are called Homo sapiens sapiens, which means a wise man. Uh, elephant is Loxodonta africana, big tooth of Africa. So for science, the first time you, uh, you discover a new creature known to science, you give it a name, a scientific name, and that becomes the species name. And the species name, every time you do a study, People who do a study on leopards always have to go back to the original species description of the leopard. And out of interest, say the leopard is called Panthera bardus, and it was also described by Linnaeus. So these original books where Linnaeus started listing some of the early species names, people still go back to and refer to, which is why we have to maintain these collections, preserve them and conserve them because they're still quite important for current research. I have pulled another book out two other books out which are Traveller's Accounts and this one in particular was published in 1886 and it's Traveller's Account across the entire continent of Africa. Now for South Africa and Africa for history 
why these travelers accounts are particularly important is because African cultures, the stories, the histories, the knowledge was carried on orally from father to son, from mother to daughter, generation to generation, and nothing was quite written down. So certain things would have been kept within families, how people, how people lived, how they ate, how they tended their properties, their cattle, their traditions, their beliefs. Because a lot of those old stories have died out. People have stopped carrying the stories over from generation to generation. The last book I would want to show you is one of our interesting books. is a book that is bound. The spine is bound with real leather, a snakeskin. Now, they use all sorts of very strange things to bind books. This one in particular is a book that's bound with a beautiful original snake skin. Um, ironically enough, the book isn't about snakes, it's about moths, and it's a German book. And most books in the old, in the past, were bound with leather, bound with all sorts of other things. There's one or two libraries in the world, they don't really name them, but there are two libraries in the world that even have some books bound in human skin. But they are locked up pretty tight in the vault because it's kind of creepy. 